This session is for uh, PowerShell Remoting Internals. My name is Paul Higginbotham. Uh, unfortunately, with this beautiful weather, my allergies have been flaring up and I'm kind of hoarse, so I'll, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, it's, it's worth it, it's nice to see the sunshine, but uh, it's affected me a little bit that way. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about uh, PowerShell Remoting Internals uh, today. Um, this session, what I hope to get across is um, give you an idea of how PowerShell remoting works, um, how PowerShell um, uh, executes or runs scripts on remote targets, and a little bit about the PowerShell API um, that implements uh, PowerShell remoting. Uh, quickly, the agenda, a bunch of things we wanna go through. Um, um, basically, um, I want to keep at fairly high level. PowerShell remoting is pretty complex and pretty involved, um, but in a short period of time, um, I have to cap probably keep it at a fairly high level. I'll probably throw some things at you fairly quickly. Um, please stop me for clarification. I'm going to try to stay on, on track, not get off track, but um, um, uh, my intention is to do a demo about half or part way through to maybe help clarify some of the concepts, and then uh, near the end, do kind of a walkthrough of uh, um, basically um, running a command uh, from a client to a remote target to, to hopefully uh, you know, solidify some of these ideas. Um, a little bit about me, um, a developer on the PowerShell team, actually almost nine years now. Uh, the interesting thing is I came on the team right after version two um, was shipped. And uh, it actually, the remoting uh, system was written in version two, so I actually wasn't part of writing the remoting system. Um, I did, I've done a lot of work um, uh, with the remoting system. Um, I've added to it, added features to it, fixed a lot of bugs, and uh, ended up owning, I now own the remoting system. Uh, but uh, it's been around for a long time, and actually, um, uh, I was not part of the original um, implementation of the system. Uh, the other things I do is uh, co-owner of PowerShell Security uh, with uh, another member on the team. So to get started, uh, what is PowerShell remoting? Um, essentially, the whole idea of remoting uh, was to um, uh, implement um, uh, basically automation, right? PowerShell is all about automation. And so um, get the first thing out there. The idea is that uh, with remoting, you can fan out uh, scripts automation scripts to multiple machines, um, take advantage of PowerShell job infrastructure um, for concurrency, uh, you know, so all the um, resulting data comes back and gets collected. Um, and so, so it really is to support automation. Uh, and then also the idea came as well, we can also uh, do some kind of an interactive thing, kind of like remote desktop, you can do a remote shell, right? So you can connect, you know, use an NRPS session, from you know, computer A to computer B, machine B, and um, what you type is actually executed on the second machine, and the results are you know displayed on the first machine. So you're just like a remote desktop; it's a remote shell uh, kind of a thing. And then I guess maybe the last thing in my mind is uh, also remote script debugging. You can connect uh, from machine A to machine B, run script on machine B, and also debug it real time. The other neat thing you can do with PowerShell remoting is you can connect. Um, machine A and machine B, and then while you're in machine B, you can do a second connect, an internal connect, to any other process that's hosting PowerShell um, on that second machine, uh, and, uh, and, and then debug script on, on those other processes. So it's pretty powerful uh, 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 debugging um, uh, potential there. Uh, PowerShell remoting is extensible. Uh, this is kind of a busy slide. You don't need to remember all of this stuff. Yeah, it looks busy up there as well. Uh, but uh, PowerShell is more than just remoting from machine A to machine B. There's actually five implementations of uh, remoting in PowerShell. There's, uh, I'm just going through real quick. There's the WinRM. That's the one that everybody knows when you do a new PS session. Uh, it establishes a connection through uh, WinRM from usually off box from one machine to another. Um, implemented in both Windows PowerShell and PowerShell 6. Uh, just for PowerShell 6 and for cross-platform support, there's SSH, Secure Shell Remoting. It's fairly new, it's not fully implemented. There's some features that need to be added. Um, it's only PowerShell Core where it exists, but the nice thing is it's cross-platform. Uh, and those, those are the two that, uh, where you can go off box from uh, machine A and machine B. Then there's three other implementations of remoting uh, that are local, that are on box. One of them uh, I call out of proc. It's actually what um, 
PowerShell back, background jobs uh, uses. Uh, when you do a start, um, uh, what is it, start job, uh, what happens is that PowerShell spins off a child process uh, and runs the script or commands in that child process and it uses a remoting system to communicate between the, um, uh, the main process and then the child process. Uh, you get a nice process isolation that way, but it, it's fairly heavyweight. Another one called IPC, or Interprocess Communication Remoting, is fairly new. That allows you, to, uh, on a local box, if you're an admin, uh, you can connect from, say, one shell to any other process that's hosting PowerShell. It's kind of what we referred to before. So you can connect from your shell to process B, and once in process B, you can run commands um, in process B if it's hosting PowerShell. And the whole point of that is for debugging. The idea is that you can connect from um, your shell to any process that's hosting PowerShell and then debug, uh, interactively debug script in that second process. And then the fifth one is PowerShell Direct. Uh, that, uh, again, is a local machine that allows a host to connect directly to um, uh, guest virtual machines, not through WinRM. You don't have to have WinRM set up or SSH. It just uh, goes through a, a Hyper-V socket. And that's, again, just local machine. So that just gives you an idea of just how you know, diverse uh, PowerShell remoting is. Uh, and kind of the neat thing is that uh, everything about PowerShell remoting layer is all constant. The only difference between all five of these is the transport. Uh, each, each one has a different transport uh, to um, you know, basically uh, you implement that remoting uh, feature. And the transport, of course, is, is, is just uh, the uh, logical um, entity that uh, is responsible for uh, making the connection, uh, however it is from point A to point B, from machine A to machine B, from process A to process B, and do any kind of uh, user authentication or uh, accessibility restrictions. Um, so this talk, uh, for, for partial remoting, uh, as far as it's concerned, it's, it does, uh, transport is just an uh, interface. Uh, and so this talk is to talk about the PowerShell remoting, not really the transport. Transport is kind of s uh, separate. Um, so we're going to stay focused just on PowerShell remoting. So how does PowerShell remoting work? Um, start at a very high level. Just basically what happens is that uh, from you know, client A, to some kind of target, uh, uh, a PowerShell uh, uh, basically mirrors a session from the target back to the client, right? So the, the um, client can execute script on the target uh, using, you know, API, and uh, uh, and we'll talk about it in more detail later. But uh, uh, that gets transferred to the target. Uh, the script and commands get executed. The results and, and data is, are are basically um, uh, you know, return uh, through the remoting layer. And all the magic happens in something called PowerShell Remoting Protocol. That's basically this big, huge definition of all the, uh, basically what protocol does is define the uh, messages and data that flow back and forth across the transport, across the wire, and actions that need to be taken in, in response to those messages. And again, PowerShell Remoting is transport agnostic. Um, when you set up a, a remoting session, you basically hand or indicate to the remoting system what transport you want to use. Um, uh, oh, and so the, looking at the diagram, it's a little bit busy, but this is the same kind of pattern that you always see or that I always will display in this talk. Um, you basically have a client up at the top. Within that client, there's a session. Within the session, runs a command. And then there's a transport later, layer, and then on the bottom is the target. Um, and within that target, uh, the actual session that runs a command is created, and then the command is actually run there. So in the client, when we say there's a session, components and command components are actually proxies. They talk, uh, they don't really do anything on the local box except talk to the target and relay information back and forth and direct the target how to uh, execute the command. So that's just at a very high level. Um, so one way, the best way to look at PowerShell remoting is, th I think, is through the API. Um, of course, normally you access it through command lists, but underneath the command lists they use the same API. So it's a good way to understand what PowerShell remoting is doing by looking at the API. And the remoting API is actually um, um, connected very strongly to the engine API. So how the remoting executes script remotely is very similar to how um, script is executed on a local machine. Uh, it's just basically abstracted out for, for a remoting uh, situation. So uh, in order to understand 
you know, PowerShell remoting, executing scripts, you have to kind of understand how scripts are executed uh, locally. And so I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. And there's like three main ideas you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about running PowerShell scripts. Um, the first one is uh, something called a run space. I'm not sure where that word came from. I've been doing this for so long, it's just natural to me. But really what a run space is is a PowerShell session. Um, and you think of a session, a lot of times when you open a PowerShell window, a console, um, you have a PowerShell session. Well, it opens up uh, the console with a default session. So when you type in it, that's the session you have. But PowerShell supports any number of sessions. You can create multiple sessions. And the reason you might want to do that is for concurrency or something. You can be running um, multiple scripts um, concurrently, each in their own session. So uh, run space is synonymous with session, more or less. What it is, it's a context in which um, <coughs> commands, or, or I guess we call a command pipeline runs. Uh, what that means is uh, any modules you import, any function you define, uh, variables that are defined, it's all within that run space. So that's the context in which uh, the scripts can run, multiple scripts and commands. And you can also think of it as an isolation layer, right? So you can be running scripts in different sessions, and they don't affect each other. They, they, can, they can't directly talk to each other. They're isolated. So that's, uh, so that's, uh, uh, the, that's the context in which uh, script runs. And then the next thing is, um, yeah, how are pipe command pipelines run. So how do you then uh, run a command pipeline? Um, and uh, the way that works is there's something called a PowerShell class. Uh, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate this in just a minute to, to help hopefully cement this. But the PowerShell cl class um, encapsulates all the information you need for a, a command pipeline. It can be multiple commands. It can be parameters that are bound uh, to whatever functions or commands that you, you've defined in it, uh, handles uh, data streaming and, and all that kind of thing. So it just encapsulates it all together. And then the idea is that the PowerShell um, object that encapsulates the uh, pipeline, uh, command pipeline, runs, uh, you associate it, runs against a run space. And so that's the kind of the concept there. And then finally, for remoting, uh, the big thing is uh, object serialization. PowerShell is object-oriented. Everything is about objects. So um, you know, how, how are objects passed back and forth? And it's just basically it's a, a, a serialization system. So when you're piping data from the client to commands or script you're running on a target, um, the objects get serialized on the client, deserialized on the, um, uh, on the target, and then Back and back the other way too. When the target uh, generates data, you serialize and deserialize. Questions? That's good. Uh, oh, so then I want to just uh, take a minute to demo to, to hopefully uh, uh, solidify some of these ideas. Uh, just how to use the API, and of course, PowerShell. You can access APIs there, so we can run uh, run APIs uh, on on a local PowerShell and just see kind of how this works. So you can actually, uh, you know execute script through the API locally, and then how you do it remotely. So we'll just start here. This is a clean uh, PowerShell console session. And if we type uh, get run space, we see that there is one run space, one session. And this is the default run space or session that is created for you automatically when you open up a shell. Um, you can see um, that it's, the type is local, so it's not remote. Uh, it's open, and the availability is busy. It says it's busy because it's, it's running this command uh, um, when, it, when it gets that information. So um, we talked about the PowerShell object. Uh, there's a static uh, create function on a, a PowerShell class. When you take a look at it, uh, basically it just creates the class. Um, and so to kind of build a command to execute, you start by um, creating PowerShell object. You take a look at it, and you see there's property for commands. So you, uh, all the commands in a pipeline, including scripts, you can add go into this property. There's something for streams that handles data streams, uh, something called invocation state info. This is the state of the uh, command as it's running. Uh, and then there's something here called run space. This is what we talked about. So this is the session. And you can see that it uh, actually created one 
for you. If you don't specify a run space, it just creates one. And it's a local run space, right? So now if we do a get run space again, we see like, oh, there's two run spaces. There's a default one that we had before. Now there's this second one that's been created. Again, a local run space. Um, state is open, availability is available. It's ready for commands to be run. So then the next thing you do, okay, so we have a PowerShell object. We have the run space that was created for us, a local run space. And now you can just go ahead and add, oops. Oh, actually, I should probably, I just want to demonstrate this real quick. We do a get member. Just look at this uh, PowerShell object a little bit more. There's um, methods to add commands, add parameters, add arguments, add script, uh, all kinds of things to build up your <coughs> command pipeline. And of course, it's uh, and some other things in there as well. And of course, it's got a run space uh, property so that you can associate a session for that command to run in. So then we're just going to add a, a simple script. I'm just going to get uh, the process ID or uh, the process of um, Very simple. If you, you know, if you take a look at the object and at the commands um, property, you see that it's there. And then to now execute this command, this script, um, we just do an invoke. Okay, and then what this does is uh, invokes it synchronously, and then when it returns it returns uh, the process object that you expect. And if you look at the process object a little more closely. We see that it's an actual process object, a system diagnostic process. Um, it's live. It has methods uh, that you can run on the process. You can even kill the process. So it's just a live object um, you know, on, on the system that you, can, um, you know, that you can use. So OK, so that's how you execute uh, or how, to, how you run uh, commands locally. Now the question is, how then do you uh, run commands uh, remotely? And so. The, the only difference here is that uh, you provide the PowerShell object a run space that is a remote run space. This is a run space um, that is associated with uh, a remote connection. You know, in order to do that, um, uh, there is something called a, uh, yeah, actually I think the best way to show it is uh, to create a run space, there's a Space factory object that has static um, create run space um, method. And there's a bunch of them for creating different kinds of run space, but we're interested in creating a um, remote run space. And so the overloaded create run space method that we want to use takes something called a run space connection info object. What that is, is an object that defines a, a number of things, but two main things are. Um, what type of connection you want to make, what kind of remote connection you want to make, and also information on how to make that connection. It's things like user account information and, um, of course, target computer and other pieces of information, depending on the, you know, the transport that's used. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's like five, uh, there's five tra implemented transports right now, five implemented uh, remoting um, mm -hmm. solutions implemented in uh, PowerShell right now. And so there's a derived run space connection info object for each one of those. Uh, and so the idea is that uh, when you pass that particular object in to this run space factory, it will see what kind of object it is and, cr and then you know, build up the, um, uh, the, the object with the correct uh, uh, transport and, and everything so that uh, it, it can make that, that type of connection that you want to do. So to demonstrate that, um, I was going to do SSH, Secure Shell Remoting, but I'm having trouble connecting. Uh, I don't know why here. So instead, I'm just going to use a, a local um, IPC connection. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect from this shell that we see here. And I just opened up, uh, I think this one here, just a, another shell that's hosting PowerShell and has a process ID uh, 12700. So I'm going to make a connection from here to that process that's hosting PowerShell. Uh, oops. So in order to do that, I start by um, name pipe connection info. So this name pipe connection info object is a, a derivation from a run space connection info object, and this is used to create connection information 
um, between processes using the main pipe. And if you take a look at it, it takes a number of things, but basically what, it, uh, what we care about is pricing in the process ID. And uh, what did I say it was? 12700. And then passing 12, I guess it's 700, right? Okay, now that's created that object. Let me take a look at it. Um, the important thing here is really the process ID. Um, so that's what that specifies. Now, using that, we can create a run space, and we pass that in the um, run space creation um, API. It will, it will see that as a name pipe type object and, and create that kind of a run space for it. So now we can create a run space. <coughs> Factory. We can optionally pass in the host. This is a host of this um, shell, so that any host calls don't really need it. You can pass in null, but I just do that. Then we pass in the connection info. Now if we do a get run space, we see we have the third one. Okay, now we have a run space that's been created. It's a type remote. Um, but the state is before open and availability is none. So what this is done, this is just created stuff on the client. This is all client side stuff. Everything's all set up for the connection uh, to the remote target. Uh, in order to actually start that connection, initiate that connection, uh, you use the uh, open method on the run space. So when you call that uh, method, it initiates the connection. It does any kind of accessibility check. For instance, you can't just connect from one process to another unless you're, you're running as an uh, admin or something like that. Um, uh, it actually does a bunch of things. And this is at the transport level. So it not only gets a connection started, but it also establishes a PowerShell session um, in that uh, target um, you know, for the, uh, for, for the, in order to, uh, what you run a script on, just needs the session that to be created. And we'll talk about it in more detail in a minute. Oops. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So I just uh, did the open. It's very quick because it's local. Now you see, okay, everything's there. State is open. Um, availability is available. Uh, and then the, the last thing you do is you just uh, now associate it, um, the remote run space, with uh, the run space on the PowerShell object that contains the command you want to run. So we do that, and then now we invoke synchronously. Um, and now we get the process object again. If we look at the process object, uh, it looks the same. But if you look at it more closely, oh, another thing too is, is as we expected, the I process ID is 12700, because that's the process that we connected to. Um, but if you look at it more closely, let's see, the get member, we see that what we get back is not a process object, but a deserialized process object. Okay, so this is the whole serializing, deserializing uh, thing of the PowerShell remoting system. So on the Target process, it gets the process object, serializes it, sends it to the client, and then deserializes it. And this is not a live object. I mean, the only two methods that we have are get type and to string. So this is really just like a snapshot of that process at the time it was serialized. Um, and, and, and this is this is basically just a, um, a PowerShell custom object with, with properties. Uh, PowerShell does actually um, on the remote on the serialization system when it does deserialization, there are some types that it recognizes and creates an actual instance of when it can do it correctly and safely. For instance, uh, PS credential. When it goes through um, uh, the remoting system, um, there's details there, but basically the, the credential, actual credential instance object is created uh, on either side uh, after it gets deserialized, and it's called rehydration. Um, the only other thing I want to demonstrate real quickly, uh, running out of time, is uh, uh, is that the serialization system you can play with at any time. You can access it through um, um, commandlets. For instance, there's export CLI. I'm not sure where that name came from. 
So it's just going to take that proc object that's a live object and it's going to serialize it into an XML file. And, and it's the same, uh, same serialization that uh, PowerShell does. And you see that this is the XML of the serialized object. Um, and it's got type information, the kind of type that it's representing, and a uh, ton of properties. And you can see for a process, it's just, it's huge. Uh, it's just, you know, all the, all the modules that are loaded into the process and everything is there, so. Um, so that's all as far as I want to go for the demo on this. Then I want to get back to talking about what's actually going on and maybe get to the walkthrough of what's actually happening. Uh, so we can see in the API how to uh, uh, create objects and uh, execute script and commands over a remoting uh, layer, remoting boundary, but what actually happens. Uh, so we're getting into a little bit of details. I won't, get in, I won't dwell on it too much, but uh, some of the this is the way I think of remoting architectural and conceptual layers. Uh, everything starts with the transport that I talked about already. Um, the transport you know, obviously defines you know, um, how the connection is made and how data is passed back and forth and all that sort of thing. On top of that uh, is uh, the remoting protocol that defines uh, what messages uh, there are and data associated with those messages and actions um, in, in order to you know, implement remoting. Then there's the small uh, protocol just for completeness added in for remote debugging that works on top of the remoting protocol and that implements uh, uh, inter uh, script uh, debugging. And then the PowerShell serialization system, so obviously can be passed back and forth, talk about that. PowerShell remoting implementation, uh, that's a huge bucket um, that we can talk about a little bit more. Um, but, um, and then on top of that is the engine implementation that actually runs the script, actually executes scripts um, in the engine. Just real quick on the PowerShell remoting protocol. Again, we already talked about it. It defines messages and data over the wire, specifies actions to be taken. Uh, this is all documented. Uh, Microsoft, all uh, protocols have to be uh, documented uh, in very uh, formal way with using normative language. And uh, if you're interested, you can, you can look up uh, the document's called MS-PSRP. It's very comprehensive, very long, very dry, but it has all the information in theory you can implement PowerShell remoting. Uh, based on that. And there's one both for the remoting and then there's a small one for the remote debugging, if you're interested. So just to recap real quick, basic remoting concepts that we just were looking at. Um, the run space connection info defines what the transport is, what kind of connection, what kind of uh, uh, remoting connection that, that you're going to want. And we uh, actually, I couldn't get SSH. I was going to do SSH. But here, it's, it's the same thing we did, except not with name pipes. This is SSH connections that's being created. Um, uh, and, and then uh, in order to, uh, yeah, and then you create a run space, you pass it the connection info object that tells it, uh, you know, what kind of transport to use for the, for the remoting session. Um, command pipeline, you associate the run space session with a, a command pipeline, and then you can execute that command pipeline on that run space. And again, the object serialization so that data can be passed back and forth. Um, so, this is supposed to be uh, internals and deep dive. I'm not going to spend too much time here because it's a really busy slide, but I just want to put something up here that s sort of summarizes all the things that we kind of talked about already. But the components are, we've already talked about these, the transport manager, those are the objects in PowerShell um, implementation that, uh, that, that uh, talk to the transport, that basically implement the tra transport. It's divided up between client and server, client and target, and session and command, that's kind of a pattern you see all the time. Serialization, we talked about that. Protocol implementation, again, there are components on the client and, and, and symmetrically components on the server, and then a split between session and command, because on session you can have a number of commands uh, that can run. Uh, run space connection info, we talked about that, the different ones that already exist, and there may be some new ones in the future, PowerShell uh, run space and, and PowerShell um, command pipeline. Okay, so finally, um, I wanted to get uh, uh, to hopefully, if it's not real clear, but help me make this a little more clear, kind of walk through what happens. So we already, in the demo, we already, you know, typed in commands and used the API to um, 
execute remote script on a, on a remote target. Uh, and now I just want to go through uh, and just see what happens in each one of these steps. Um, and hopefully it's not too complex. Uh, this, this diagram is kind of similar to the one we saw before. Again, the way it's structured is at the top part is the client, at the bottom part is the target, and then there's a dotted line in between, and that's the remoting boundary, whether it's process boundary in a local machine or you know, boundary between two machines in different countries. Um, uh, and then there's a, a transport that handles you know, how the data is, how the connection is made and how data is passed back and forth. Um, and then, um, and then if you look at each box, the upper left client and, and the lower right uh, server, they're divided in half. Again, it's divided between session on the bottom and then the commands that run, within, that run on that session on the top and the same thing. And again, the whole idea of remoting is that uh, uh, on, the, on the client, uh, or on, uh, basically the client um, causes uh, a session and command to be created um, on, the, on the target and then the components on the client reflect that, they're proxies, they, they talk to that and reflect what's going on uh, on the remote target. So, oops, there we go. So, invoke command, host name, target computer script block, hello, now we're at the command level, we're not at, uh, uh, at the API anymore, but of course underneath it's using the API. The, the, the invoke command, we're using a, a parameter set called host name, so it knows internally that that's SSH. So it's going to create an SSH transport. So what happens uh, when you type this in? So, oops. Uh, so the first thing we kind of talked about already, uh, SSH connection info object is created because that defines the connection that we want. Um, the run space is created based on that connection info, so it's a SSH, you know, based run space with SSH transport. Um, and then other things, I don't know if we want to get into too much detail here, this connection state machine is created, there's data structure handlers created for implementing the protocol, and then the transport managers that's created that knows how to, you know, talk to the SSH and, and do that sort of thing. Um, and again, the run space is open, the connection is initiated, um, authentication is, is done as needed, um, negotiations, you know, on capability, um, you know, what version of PowerShell are you talking to? Uh, when all that's done, then the client just basically monitors the state. So if, if everything is good, the, the remote run space um, on the target or the, the run sp has been established and everything is good and now it's ready for commands to be uh, run on it. Just a quick interlude here, you know, when we're talking about talking back and forth between client and, and, and target. Um, it's passing data back and forth. It's basically passing data packets, uh, PowerShell remoting protocol data packets. I just want to, just, you don't have to remember any of this stuff, but just get an idea of kind of what you think it is. There's different types of data packets depending on the message that goes back and forth. Um, there's things that talk about is the destination client, is the destination server, um, target interface, uh, you know, association of IDs, stuff like that. So every time we talk about, you know, the client talking to the server and the server talking to the client, um, these data packets are being passed back and forth. They look like that. So that's on the client. On the client, it goes through there that we saw, um, uh, created the run space, opened it, uh, the connection. So what happens on the target? So what happens on the target is that uh, when the connection is initiated um, and the connection is set up, the next thing that happens is that the transport then has to establish some sort of a host to host PowerShell. So it establishes the host, um, uh, starts up PowerShell, uh, configures PowerShell, as can happen uh, in different ways. Um, and PowerShell is running what we call server mode. It's, it's basically just running a listener loop. Uh, and so it can respond to protocol messages. Um, there's some other details like um, when it creates a run space on the target, it's, it's encapsulated in something called a run space drive. And the idea is that it's running in this context where when it's running, uh, um, the, uh, the driver passes information back and forth th you know, through the protocol uh, to the client so that the, the, the client object run space acts like it's it's the actual local run space, but it's not. But it, it goes through this, uh, this driver thing. And so essentially it sets up and then it just sits there and it just waits for the command from the client. So it's ready to go, just waiting for a command. So, there, so now, um, 
invoke command, <laughs> get back to it. It's established the session. The session is fine. Uh, the, uh, the session is running on the target. Um, it gets an acknowledgement back that everything is good. Um, then the next is now it wants to run a command. It wants a command pipeline. So what does it do? Uh, the way this works is um, the command pipeline is wrapped as we talked in the PowerShell object. Um, then it's encoded in a custom object. What that is, is basically is a property bag. All the information, uh, it doesn't even serialize it. Basically, it just looks through all the properties that it cares, that the remote side cares about that's defined in the protocol and just adds, uh, creates a property bag about the command, about arguments, binding, you know, stu just stuff that it needs to know to execute the command on the, uh, on the target. Um, yeah, so that is encoded in a PS custom object property bag. Then that gets serialized and then sent to the target for, for, so that it'll run, so it'll execute. Um, and again, quick interlude, something you don't actually have to know, but this is kind of the data that you see. What you see on the bottom here is the actual serialized PS object um, that contains the command pipeline information that's been sent to, uh, that's being sent to the, um, uh, to the target. Whoops. And then as you expect, on the target side, it decodes a command, basically takes those properties and then creates an instance of the PowerShell object. Uh, and then actually runs that PowerShell object within, uh, again, this is called the PowerShell driver. It's like the RunSpace driver, but it runs the PowerShell script, executes PowerShell script like we did in the demo, except in the context of this um, remoting the protocol so that, uh, um, say, um, you have data that's being piped from the client you know, to the uh, target that handles this, the data uh, stream coming in and, and any data that's created on the target that gets passed back to the client. Um, it goes through the driver and gets handled correctly through the protocol. Um, and there's a lot of details there. Uh, and then finally, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the client side, uh, it's just sitting there, it's monitoring the, uh, s uh, the state of the command as it's running. Um, whether it's running, stop, completed, failed. Uh, again, handling any data that's being streamed back. There's also things like host calls, direct host calls are handled in the protocol. Um, you know, so if you do like a prompt or something that gets handled um, and stop signal as well. Uh, but it basically it's just waiting for the, uh, it's just receiving data and waiting for the command to complete. Uh, and it can optionally send a stop signal if you want and then that's handled through the protocol. So all that stuff and uh, <laughs> all you get is hello coming back. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all, all the things that happened. Uh, uh, and then actually there's maybe one other thing. Um, that is, you know, as a software developer, you, you kind of want to uh, deal with it's things get cleaned up afterwards. And so if you're interested, uh, this kind of talks a little bit about how get things get cleaned up. Uh, uh, invoke command just invokes it once and everything all gets torn down afterwards. Uh, so a fair amount of state gets created. You know, you execute uh, the command, you get the data back, then everything's torn down. So that uh, um, is about, is as far as I wanted to go on how remoting things, uh, how remoting script gets, um, you know, execute on a remote target. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. I was going to then kind of just go into uh, endpoint configuration. Um, what remoting endpoint configuration is, is because uh, I went over this very quickly, is when you establish the remote session on the target, it creates a PowerShell, you know, or it creates a host, and then in the host it creates a PowerShell session. There it's uh, um, actually possible to configure how that PowerShell session well, was configured, right? Uh, and uh, so things like how it's hosted, what kind of account it's hosted in, or sort of access control, who can connect to it, uh, quotas and stuff, you know, how uh, timeouts and things, how long commands can take, so things like this can be configured in some cases. Um, at the host level and at the PowerShell level, of course, PowerShell has uh, some pow powerful ways to configure a run space session, you know, commands that are visible, uh, language mode, that we didn't even get to that you run in, uh, available drives, um, all kinds of things like, like this that can, can restrict, you know, what you can do in that remote session. And in fact, uh, our GR, Just Enough Administration, uses that. Uh, you know, for secure, for creating secure connections to endpoints um, uh, that are rest greatly restricted in what you can do, you know, for high value machines, high value targets. Um, and of course, the GIA is basically role-based, so it's, it's depending on 
what group you're in and what account you have, you get these particular privileges, uh, access rights. Um, currently, that kind of configuration is only supported on WinRM right now, the, the original um, um, remoting solution for PowerShell. Um, but it's something we want to add to the SSH um, secure shell uh, transport at some point. Um, so anything that's not WinRM uh, um, transport um, basically just creates a default PowerShell, which is wide open. Everything is, is open in, in, in the game. And uh, just the things that you can use to look at uh, or to play with uh, configuration, there's some command lists, register right? PS session, new PS session configuration, new role capability file. Oops. So that, uh, oh, just about on time. That uh, pretty much is all I wanted to go through uh, for the remoting. It was pretty high level, a lot of hand waving. There's a lot of details. Um, you're very welcome to talk with me afterwards if you want more details about you know, how it all works. Um, um, but basically, I guess the summary is um, you know, the, the remoting is really <laughs> fairly robust and very ex easy to extend. Um, the whole idea is for automation. Um, presuming PowerShell object, the PowerShell, object, you know, data object that makes PowerShell, PowerShell so, so great. Um, the access to the command lists and API and um, the interactive uh, shell remote and remote debugging, I think, is, is pretty powerful. Um, and with that, I think that's, uh, that's all I have. Are there any questions? Uh, so the question is, in PowerShell 7, will there be um, endpoint configuration support for SSH? And the answer is, I don't know. I would like to. Um, yeah, <laughs> me, me too. Um, it's something I'm, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about, but uh, it really comes down to resources, and it's, it's above my pay grade. That's correct. So the question was, um, can we use run spaces for um, find out scenario where you are pushing um, high workloads to uh, to, to, to targets, to servers that are capable of running those workloads and then gathering the data. And yes, that's exactly what, uh, well, that's one of the things that it supports. I think the original uh, idea was uh, for automation management, but that, that is uh, perfect as well, the idea of, uh, uh, of, of uh, pushing out workloads, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. The question is, how do you keep track of all these things when you're finding stuff out? Um, and they're all running you know, concurrently, and then how do you gather it all and, and, and deal with that? And, 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 the, and the answer is yes, you, as you suggested, jobs is a PowerShell way of doing it. I personally think there should be a different, another concurrency model that's, a little bit, that's different than jobs and, and maybe easier to use. It's something that I would like to look into, um, but that's, that's on the horizon. So it looks like, oh, looks like our time is up. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>